I think usually when we look at the challenges with branded content, a lot of it has to do with um, a pretty hefty investment, um, maybe not so scalable process. And when I think one of the advantages people see with the Facebook platform is the predictability of scale. So you know that for the target audience, you'll get a certain scale, certain reach, certain accuracy. So I think just getting people to the table in terms of willingness to make the investment, it's, it's already there. The second point is just this symbiotic relationship where you combine. I think you know we can we can talk CNN. But, you know we have example with with another uh, news outlet like now now this is that if you find the symbiotic relationship in terms of which audiences you need to reach and you know that the content provider has this access to this audience specifically on the Facebook platform, you get this this increment. So you will, you know that by combining two, you will get more because you will combine the power of the, of the two brands uh, on the Facebook platform. And then at the end is just the ability to, to measure, right? So what, uh, which, which you talked to a bit as well, how much would I get without the um, news outlet, let's say, having this symbiotic relationship with me versus if I did it on my own? I do think there's a difference between, because you can go and acquire an audience, right? Mm -hmm. You can go and buy an audience and guarantee views, views that way. Um, and I think, you know, there's a suite of tools that you can do that with. But actually, if you start with what the content is in the first place and what the story is about, you're starting with good content. There should be, you know, that, that amount of organic views you're going to get naturally. And I think you know, if you're just starting with the fact that you can acquire, acquire an audience anyway, use these platforms, you know, you, you're, you're negating the fact actually if you've got good quality content, which it should always start with, you know, you should naturally be able to push this out and it will get the organic but views. But organic reach is, is next to nothing on Facebook now, isn't it? Well, not once you, see, you know, maybe you're, you're paying to get things started and, you're, mm. you know, Facebook isn't the only platform you can mm. use, of course. You want to pay to get things started, but once you've got people really engaging in it, I mean, one of the, the examples that I, that I was talking about, one of the videos was the wasabi you're eating is probably not wasabi. It had four million views, we guaranteed way, way, way less than that. Some people might have seen that. It went truly viral. Mm. Um, and that was because the content was interesting. It was right for the audience we were targeting in the first place. I think the critical point for it, though, is in the measurement. And I mean, content really, there's so many different forms of content. Mm. And as an industry, I would say we're quite uh, behind where we need to be in terms of valuing that content and the different forms of it. So what does quality content, what, what role does that play for the advertiser and how do they understand that? We're really reliant on them being very clear to us in terms of what we're working to so that then we can optimise to deliver the best results back. The, there is a difference between the role that a platform plays and the role that a publisher plays. And if I were to be critical of, of publishers in the past, I'd say that they've let the platform side of the world define the measurements the, or the metrics that you should use to measure effectiveness and um, quite clearly a three second view on one piece of content doesn't have the same value in the eyes of a consumer that, that a two minute session reading one article might do and there needs to be a, a recognition of that and I think it's incumbent on uh, on, on the industry as a whole to change that. I mean, we do, we do a lot of work with Apple News, so we're the reseller for Apple News in, in the UK. And there, in terms of, if we look at the formats that are available now, as well as some of the stuff that's coming further down the line, it's very much about native, much less about um, being able to do that programmatically. So the native formats piece is, is the essential piece at the moment. But I do think longer term, mm. there's certainly going to be a shift now, but I don't necessarily think it'll be 100%.